faith is confidence now faith is confidence in what we hope for now faith is confidence now faith is confidence in what we hope today is that behind me you see that they're starting to set up the canopies for this Sunday. Uh, perhaps while you're watching this video we'll be having worship on July 12th out in the yard. The church council voted this week to continue outdoor worship through July and August on 10, at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning weather permitting. If there needs to be a cancellation because of weather you'll find that on the local radio station or on our Facebook account. We will continue to stream services uh, through this whole time and you'll be able to receive those online uh, for those who are not able to come and join us for worship. And finally in September we plan to be together in the sanctuary and we'll have an Easter celebration the first Sunday of September uh, like we've never had before. So I invite you to join us outside, online, in the sanctuary, wherever you are able to join us for worship. Good morning, friends, and welcome to the Carol First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Terry Plocker, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for worship today. Come and bow on your knees with us as we worship the one Almighty God. I'd like to share some ministry announcements with you. First of all, Vacation Bible School is in progress, and you can join that by talking to Susie. Uh, you can still catch up from the one week that we've done. Second, there will be two blood drives this week at the church. They're really in, in quite desperate need of blood donations, so if you can do that, contact LifeServe and see if there are any appointments still available for you. Church Council will meet this week on Wednesday. The Mission Committee is collecting items for local school children and for the in-gathering. If you uh, look in your newsletter, you'll find a list of, of items that they're collecting. You can also get that list from the entryway at the Main Street end of the church. 
bring the items that you have to donate and place them in the in the entryway on the ma at on the main street side of the church and uh, we'll make sure they get to the right place finally racial justice is a critical issue in our culture today we as people of faith have something to say about how god's children should be treated renew covenant church has invited us to a movie about justice and mercy They'll be screening that tonight at 7 o'clock in the Renew Youth Center. The movie is about a young man named Michael Stevenson who's a lawyer and he filed an appeal on behalf of Walter McMillan who had been wrongfully accused and convicted of murder and was sitting on death row. We can learn from Mr. Stevenson and Mr. McMillan what systemic racism looks like in our culture. And perhaps we can imagine how we can be an answer to that rather than standing passively by. I hope that some of you will be able to join us 7 o'clock tonight in Renew Covenant Church's Youth Center. Go to Highway 30, the trading post, and go to the door uh, beside the trading post and go up the stairs. It's on the second floor and join us for that screening. There will be a discussion next Friday night on Zoom uh, regarding this movie and you can get details about, about that on Sunday night or contact me contact me and I will get you hooked up now let us prepare for worship open your hearts so they are an inviting place for God open your minds so it is an inviting place for Christ open your spirit so it is an inviting place for the Holy Spirit Good morning, church family. Please hear our call to worship this morning. A love that never ceases. A creativity that designed the universe. A hope that cannot be quenched. A pursuit of reconciliation, no matter the cost. These are the things that are, that are of God. Then let us worship God. Our first song today is one that you won't recognize. It is the song from the first week of Vacation Bible School. I hope the children have listened to it, sung it, enjoyed it, and we can all enjoy it now. Listen to the message. No sin to be sin for us God made him who had no sin to be sin for us So that in him we might become So that in him we might become The righteousness of God 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 God made him who had no sin for us God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become so that in him we might become the righteousness of God 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 Oh, oh, oh. 
Our first scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Psalm, chapter 19, verses 6 through 10. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. It's time for us to gather in prayer today. An important part of worship is our praying for and with one another. Our concerns today, of course, range far and wide across our country and around the world with concerns for peace, justice, hope, health for all people. But specifically at home, we want to lift up families who are grieving and maybe celebrating the anniversary of a loved one's death. We want to lift up those who have been hospitalized, uh, Sue has just uh, returned home from the hospital this week and she's doing well. We want to remember Margaret. We want to remember Arnie. We want to remember the people in care centers. Esther is still at, at Regency Care Center and we want to, to lift her up as well as the regular residents at all of the care centers. Oh God, we thank you and call on your name. We glory in you, our God, our strength. You have told us to seek your presence continually, and we do that now. You've told us to remember your wondrous works, and we do that now. You are our God, and there is none like you. You never promise anything that you can't keep. You never fail us, regardless of how small and insignificant we might feel. But Lord, we have sinned. We have failed, we have doubted this week. We have not been who we are in Christ. We have loved the world and ignored your word. We have forgotten you by thinking so much about ourselves. Please forgive us, O God, and all of our hope is in you. Bless First United Methodist Church, O Lord, and all who worship with us. Use us to share about Jesus today. Encourage us as we seek a way through these strange times and be a beacon for us so that we might be a beacon to those around us. And we lift up those among us who are recovering, who may be in the hospital, who are in care centers. We know that you have wrapped your arms around them. Help them to know that our love is with them as well. Now, God, prepare our hearts to receive your word. May it change us. What good is hearing it unless it does that? Wash us, shape us, refine us, shatter our misconceptions about you, reconstruct our values, and make us different. Make us less and you more. For that would be the best of all. And do all this for the sake of of Jesus, in whose name we ask as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There are many ways that we can give generously to God's work here at First United Methodist Church, and as we reach out to the community and around the world. 
I encourage you to give as you can to those ministries. Oh God, we receive gifts from you and we give you gifts today. What we give is an expression of our love for you. Take it, bless it, use it to your glory so that people's lives will be changed and hearts will be softened. We pray that you'll use it for justice, use it for loving, use it for reaching children and, use it, and reaching seniors. Use it so that we are part of your kingdom and your work here in Carroll. Amen. Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The winds blow where it chooses. And you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. This is the word of the God, of God. Thanks be to God. I've got a fun thing to show you today. I've been doing a lot of this lately. And that's high pressure washing. 
Um, we're going to go out to the front step of my house and you're going to see how I can clean that step up by high pressure washing. Let's go outside and take a look. You see, that water, just by itself, wouldn't clean that stain off that concrete. But adding the pressure through the high pressure washer, it's got, now that water's got enough power to clean that concrete right up. Does a nice job. Okay, now let's think about this. Pastor Terry's gonna be talking about God, the Almighty. If you look at that word Almighty, it's, you know, mighty, which, you know, to us means powerful, strong, and then you put the all in front of it, and it's all powerful. God is amazing. He's so powerful that he can control the whole universe. Okay, what does that mean to us? If we recognize God's power and we let God operate in our life, he can do like that high pressure washer where the high pressure washer takes ordinary water and makes it really powerful in cleaning up concrete well likewise god can come into our lives and make us very powerful and make life wonderful for us and really clean up our act too while we're at it okay so remember that god is almighty and because of his mighty characteristics being so powerful and he loves us and he can come into our lives and help empower our lives amazing isn't it okay let's pray so if you close your eyes bow your head fold your hands and repeat after me dear God thank you for being the powerful wonderful God that you are help us to trust you and engage your power in our lives that we may do wonderful things for you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Vacation Bible School this week, the key word is almighty. We're going to be learning about God's power. So there's a demonstration of power that I'd like to share with you now. Okay, my friends, let's see how this experiment goes. Okay, Coke and Mentos. One, two, three! It's experiment time. And I've got my Mentos in the tube and the Coke is in the bottle, and we're going to see what happens here. To be honest, this is our third try, but I believe it's gonna work. The kids in Vacation Bible School will get a chance to, to try that themselves. Now, that was a demonstration of a certain kind of power. You might say uh, chemical power, chemical reaction. It was the explosive release of carbon dioxide from the soda. There are other kinds of power that are even stronger though. Maybe electrical power. Maybe the power of a locomotive pulling a mile long train of coal cars behind it. There's military power that's measured in uh, the number of bombs and the number of people. There's natural power, like gravity, the sun, wind, the waves. There's interpersonal power, the power that one person has with respect to another, or political power, the power that one person has with respect to a group of people. There's also the power of money. There's also the power of fear. Now in physics, energy or power 
Power is energy transferred per unit of time. And we measure that in watts, in tractive force, in horsepower, in kilotons of explosive power. And we can, we can see and feel that power, can't we? We can see and feel some of the powers that I, that I talked about. For instance, gravity. We can feel gravity as the coffee cup slips out of our hand and falls to the floor and breaks. That's the power of gravity. We can, we can feel the power of the sun, the radiation from the sun, warming the tops of our heads. We can, we can feel the, the wind pushing our car back and forth in our lane on a windy day. We can, we can see the power of erosion when we look at the Grand Canyon. We can feel the power that people have when they try to exercise power over us or the power that politicians have when they try to use it either fairly or selfishly. Coke and Mentos is just a, a, a cool demonstration, but it's, it's nothing compared to these other powers, these natural powers that I mentioned. It's really nothing compared to those, and really those are nothing compared to God. The power of electricity, the power of a, of a locomotive pulling a mile-long train, train of coal cars is nothing compared to the power of God. God's power is, is out of this world, indescribable, unimaginable power. There are two words that we use to talk about God's power. One is omnipotent. Omnipotent uh, literally is many powers, omnipotent, many powers. And it has, has the connotation that there are no limits, there are no boundaries to God's power. God can do whatever God chooses to do because God chooses to do it. God has both the will and the power to accomplish whatever God wants. And, and I hear the echo of the Alleluia Chorus in my, in my head as uh, the Alleluia Chorus says, For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Omnipotence. The second word we have when we talk about God's power is mighty. We might talk about the might of a nation. We might talk about the, the might of a cargo ship. God's mighty power is beyond all earthly power. It's, it's greater than all the man-made machines added together. God's power is, is greater than all the speeding locomotives in the world added together. God's power in, in, is greater than the power of nature in hurricanes. God's power is greater than the power of gravity or the power of earthquakes. God's power is greater than the power of any person or any army that has ever walked the face of the earth. Therefore, almighty means all powers, above all powers. God has a power that's above all other powers in the universe. Now, the Bible first uses the Hebrew word shaday, which is translated almighty, in Genesis 17, 1. In that chapter, it begins, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Shaday, which is that Hebrew word, has to do with, with wilderness and mountains and the power of nature. It also can connotate the word overpower. More than power. More than any power that we can imagine. For instance, God's power in creation is, is a wonderful example of that. God creating ex nihilo from nothing. Out of God's imagination came all that is. There was nothing to work with except God and God's imagination. And God was able to create all that we have, starting with an earth that was formless and void. It wasn't here. Remember that power is energy transferred per unit of time. So many of the Bible stories show God transferring power to people. For instance, uh, Noah, power to build the ark. Abraham, the, the ability to believe, to have faith, and, and follow through with that. Moses, the power to do those miracles in Egypt and the power to, to see the Red Sea parted. David, 
the power to defeat the Philistines. Daniel, the power to survive that night in the lion's den. Those are amazing things. Those are amazing things that God does in people when God transfers God's power to them. And the funny thing is there's no end to God's power. No matter how many times God gives us power, no matter how many times God exhibits God's power, the, the gas gauge of God's power never leaves full. There's an infinite amount of it. It's always there and it's always full. In the New Testament, God is still transferring power. For instance, the incarnation. What greater example could there be of God's power than the ability of God to choose to become one of us? God chose to become one of us and then was able to become a human. That's a tremendous power. And then we see that same power in the baptism when the dove comes down and transfers the power of the Holy Spirit to Jesus. When the, when, in the temptations, how else could Jesus have survived those temptations in the wilderness had it not been for the power of God? Then there's the miracles. The calming of the sea, the healing of the lepers, the raising of Lazarus, the feeding of the 5,000, the woman that touched the hem of Jesus' cloak that we talked about last week. All that power, all that might. It's more than all of our strength and our ability, and it comes from the power, from the heart of God. Now, some people ask us, where is God? Prove to me that God exists. Well, I think one of the clearest proofs is the cross and the resurrection. Because God is almighty, God could choose death to defeat sin. And then God could choose life to defeat death in the resurrection. Some people wonder, where is God? And they say, prove to me that God exists. And, and we can say, well, look at nature, look at creation and explain to me every detail, every nuance of creation and how it came to be out of chaos. And it's hard to do. Now, they're right in that God's power is invisible. We can't directly measure it like we can horsepower or watts. But invisible does not mean powerless. Unseen does not mean that it doesn't have any power. There's another experiment in Vacation Bible School this week demonstrating the power of air pressure. Now, we can't feel air pressure. We can't sense the air pressure around us, but it's there. And in this demonstration, air pressure is used to crush an aluminum can in a matter of a second. And it's a very dramatic experiment to show the power of air pressure. We can't see air, we can't feel air, but we can see its effect. Just because we can't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. We can't see static electricity, but when there's a lightning bolt, we don't wanna be in its way, do we? We can't see photosynthesis either, but I sure love to sit under a shade tree. The real trouble is not that we can't see God's power, but that we don't look. We don't look for the displays of God's almighty power around us. We know it's there, but we don't even try to connect to it. A young missionary named Herbert Jackson, in his first assignment, was given a car. Now, the car didn't seem to start, so he devised a system by which he'd go to the local school and he'd borrow some, some children to help him push start the car. And then he'd either park on a hill or he'd leave it running if he was just going in someplace quick during the day. And he thought this was pretty ingenious the way he had developed this system to be able to use the car that didn't start. Well, he became ill, Mr. Jackson did, and he was gonna have to return home. His replacement came and he started telling his replacement about the procedure to be able to use the car. And while he was talking, uh, the replacement missionary uh, lifted up the hood and, and just looked at it. And he said, Mr. Jackson, I, I think I see the problem. I think it's a loose battery cable here. He tightened it up, turned the key, and the car roared to life. Here these years, Jackson had been using this complicated system that he had devised himself, using his own smarts and his own ingenuity when the power was right there if he would have plugged into it. 
but he didn't know. The power was there all the time. If only he would have accessed it. It was invisible, but he never made the connection. Tozer said something like, God is looking for people who will try seemingly incredible things so that God through them can do the impossible things. And he continued, what a pity that we plan only the things that we can do by ourselves. God is almighty. God is our almighty God. Believe it or not. See it or not. Understand it or not. But I hope this week we can open our eyes and not only see but be part of that power that the almighty, omnipotent God offers us through the Holy Spirit. Paul in Ephesians writes, God is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power at work within us. My prayer is that we would recognize our inadequacy without God and our invincibility with God. May the almighty power of God be the measure of your expectations. Amen. Almighty God is able to do far more than we could ever hope or imagine. Go now, trust in God's almighty power in your life today and always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.